Hello, my name is J.P. Edify, and I use my art to minister a message from the Word of God. Many years ago, as an artist, I used to sit down and draw biblical stories or sermons that I've heard. I've been inspired to draw based on the sermons that I've, I've heard. Sometimes when I get my inspiration, I look in the Bible to find the inspiration to Hello, my name is J.B. Edify. I'm your host of Discover the Word of God again. What I believe you can discover the Word of God, everything you do around you, the Word of God can be found. I use my artwork to minister God's message. I allow the Holy Spirit to tell me what to say, what he wants to say through the illustrations that I do create, inspired by him. I believe it. <clears throat> so we have this, this, this picture here that you can see. It's a picture depicting. I'm using this scripture to tell a message that Jesus is everything that you need. Jesus is more than enough. No matter what you're going through, you have got to trust in Jesus. I encourage everyone, get a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, especially the men, the young men. Young men, every man should have an intimate relationship with God, not just the surface in your head, but a personal relationship. When you go through a lot of things, the, the last thing people are finding or not listening to, they're not trying to find out, Jesus, what did you say about this? So I just want to share this with, you, with this message. It's not about my word, it's what God wants to say. So right now, let's get ourselves into that into that atmosphere. So we're going to call him, praise him. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. We bless your holy name, O oh God. Father God, is less of me and more of you, Father. Allow me to speak and share what you would like to share to those that are seeing this message today. Father God, I just glorify you. I thank you for the gift, Lord Jesus. I now realize the gift is for me to be an artist, it's not for me just to sell, but to use the art to minister healing to those that view it in inspiration. I thank you for the opportunity, Father God, to share my gift with others so they can be inspired, to be encouraged and enlightened. I glorify you and I thank you, Lord. Hi, <laughs> I'm your artist, JB Edify. I'm a singer, artist, and a lover of Jesus Christ. What we have here is an illustration. It's an illustration that I entitled More Than Enough, and it's inspired by Matthew 15, 32 through 39. Now, I want you to read that scripture for yourself, but I'm just going to take you through a trip through More Than Enough. So that's the topic, More Than Enough. What you're going through in your life right now, everything you're going through, your job, um, your opportunities, your relationships, is it more than enough? Most likely, a lot of things, like in myself, is not enough. It's not enough for me to go to church. It's not enough for me to be in a relationship. It's not enough for me to, to have money to spend. It's not enough for me just to exist in this layer, um, just to satisfy, satisfy, my, satisfy, satisfy myself. No, I believe life is more. And the more and more that I have a relationship with Christ, and the more as I get older, I'm realizing the main purpose that we're here, the main purpose I'm here, is to make a difference in someone else's life. I remember way back, many, many years ago, when I was given the name Edify. I believe at that time that Jesus changed my name from John to Edify. And I'm the edified man. I want to be inspired. I don't want you to be in my presence without being inspired. I want you to be in my presence and, and feel a difference. I want to be a light in the darkness. Right now, there's so much darkness. There's no need for me to complain. There's no need for me to be judgmental, criticized, or any of that. What it is, is doing what Jesus is asking me to do through my life. And I know that he wants me to share my life. He wants me to share my story of his goodness. It's all about Jesus. I believe that every man, every man in the sound of my voice, you need to have a personal relationship with Christ. If you don't, 
you know you're going to be lost. Nothing you do, nothing will satisfy you. It will be temporary. It will come and it will go. The only thing that lasts and will endure forever is a relationship with Christ. No matter what you're going through, if he's a part of your life, he can lead you through. He will lead you through. If you trust, believe, and obey. It's not a gimmick. It's not a game. It's for real. And I want to share that with you. Right now, I want you to look at this illustration. Now, what you can see here, it depicts Jesus feeding the multitude. If you don't know about this story, you have to read your Bible. I encourage you, learn who he is, what he did, and why you need him in your life. You have to discover it on your own. I can't convince you. You have to want it for yourself. Even me, when I started, I didn't, I didn't you know, believe in God. When I was a little kid, I had a, a picture illustration Bible. I didn't know how to read, but I could understand what I was seeing in the picture. Looking at a picture is more there than just a picture, just like in the Bible. It's more there than just the letters that make up the words. You have to step inside the word. You have to be able to see everything that's in that word or in that story. Anything the message of Jesus is trying to tell us <clears throat> is that in order for us to see, we need his eyes to see. We need his ears to hear. You are, and we have to have a heart to understand. Glory to God. But anyway, in this story, when Jesus is standing in the middle, all of us have to have their own personal relationship with Christ. He has to be the center of your life. If he's not in the center of, the, of your life, then you're going to go through the tall, the valleys, the mountains, <coughs> the valleys, the dry deserts, and you have to do it all on your own. <coughs> I know for a fact that I couldn't climb every mountain that came in my face. You know, I couldn't travel through the valleys on my own. I would get lost and end up being there and dying there in the valley. I had to climb out, yes, but how was I going to climb if I never knew how? I don't even know how high the mountain is until you begin to climb it up and try to climb it up. You know what? Even, in, even the fact that everybody's climbing a mountain in their lives, you can't climb the mountain on your own. You have to have the proper the, the proper knowledge. You have to have the skill set and the willingness to climb. No one climbed Mount Everett without being prepared for that climb. You understand what I'm saying? How high can they go? They want to get reached the top. So there has to be a goal. Do you have a goal in your life? There's something place that you want to get up to. You know, you can't stay in the valley. You can't stay down in darkness, underneath the dirt. Come on now. Anything that's underneath the dirt basically is dead. You understand? It's something about the nourishment that's in the dirt that allows you to grow. But it takes the rain from heaven to nurture that. We have to do the same thing in our own lives. What is nurturing us? What is providing us the water that we need in order to survive? If you choose not to drink water and more of the soda, the alcohol, and so many other things that you can drink other than water. But the water is the main thing that we need in our own existence. You know what I'm saying? We can water it down with a whole lot of stuff and change the fabric of water. But water is purest form. That's all we need to survive. You can't survive on beer. You can't survive on alcohol. You can't survive on a soda. You can't survive on um, a milkshake. It won't work. It won't last. It won't give you the things that you need to survive. So hallelujah, Lord. So now that we see that we're going through a valley, we find ourselves in the desert and we see that there is no water. How many people are you living around people who have no water to give you? You're in the desert. They're in the desert. Do they want to come out or do they want to be comfortable in the desert? So many of us became lame and impotent because we stay in the desert. We think the desert is where it's all happening because if millions of people are in the desert and only a few want to rise up, then you're just left with a few rising up and the majority are in the desert. God said, I died so you can have abundant life, not a desert life. You understand? Not a drought life, not a life full of mountains and valleys without giving us hope. 
The hope that we have is in Jesus. He has to be the center. And as you understand, he has an opportunity to lead you or carry you through the mountain, through the rivers and oceans, and through the deserts. You understand, sometimes we can get involved in something that is so deep it gets over our head. You understand? I can I can smoke weed at a lake level where I'm just putting my foot in the lake. But if I want to go get a little higher, thinking I'm getting higher, I got to take another drug to get to the next the level, next level of that high. But that next level of that high can be over my head and I find myself drowning. Drowning in something that I could manage at one time, but that is over my head and I'm drowning. Who's going to save you? Who can say somebody else is in the same condition? No, it'd be difficult for them. We probably drown each other trying to survive. Hallelujah, Lord. So therefore, through this illustration, I see that Jesus must be in the center, the focus point of our lives. The focus point of this drawing is Jesus. He is the center. He's letting us know that he will lead us if we're willing to follow him. He can lead us. And if we don't have the strength and we need help, then we ask the Lord to carry us. Jesus is willing us to carry us through to that place of safety. You understand what I'm saying? We have to realize there's more there in the word of God than just the words, just the letters that make up the words. You know, it has to, it's deeper than that. And through this and through this illustration, if Jesus is in the center, center of our lives, he will lead us through the desert. Whatever dry place that we're in, if we trust in him, he can lead us through it. We all are going to face some kind of, some kind of something. None of our lives are going to be smooth. You know, even if you're the richest person, your life is not smooth and easy. You'll be tempted. You'll probably get involved with the temptation until the temptation overtakes you and you are drowning. Do not be deceived. We all need to have Jesus in our lives and not just a little bit on the side or on the left or behind us. We need him to be the center. I need him to be the center of my life, the focus point. I'm looking at you, Lord. I'm trusting in you, Lord. But I can't trust in somebody I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Even as a little child. If you're growing up around and your mother's not really there, but somebody else has taken her place, you can grow up with that, but it's not your mother. You know, it's not Jesus. It's someone who can, can be in that place of your mother, but it's still not your mother. The same thing with Jesus. You can have many gods that you want, but only one has a true power. You understand what I'm saying? Only one true God there is to follow. Now, I don't care if, 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 you know, it doesn't even matter what you think. It does if you believe or you don't believe. That's all this, that matters. If you don't believe in Jesus, then don't, this is not for you. If you believe in Jesus, then you'll hear his voice. You will see him. Jesus calls his own to himself. If you don't belong to Jesus, you won't understand him. You will care less about him and come up with your own co conclusions or whatever makes you feel better the power and what you can how, how you can determine the god that you serve is he blessing you or not is to find out what is he done for you lately you understand do you call on the buddha does he give you what you really need or is just for a moment you know how long will it endure forever that's the question will it endure forever come on glory to god he said every need shall bow and every tongue shall confess because there's going to be a time where you're going to have a test to God that you think is your God or the one and true God. That'll be your decision to make. And you have that right to choose. You have that right to choose. But for me in my life, <laughs> I choose Jesus. Yes, I choose Jesus. I want him to be the center of my life. I'm not going to change anybody or try to change anybody. I know what he did for me. Me calling on his name, me trusting in him, Jesus, and no one other than. Hallelujah. There was a time when I didn't even know him. The thing that brought me to Jesus is that when I was looking through that, 
that illustrated Bible, fascinated by the drawings, didn't know how to read, but I could understand what I was seeing. And I could see more in the illustration than I could see or understand in the word. I didn't think nothing of it at that time, but I now I see the power in the illustration in my own life. Allowing Jesus to use me, he started me out early. I remember as a child, when I realized that my name was in the Bible, John, and it was John, it was the one that Jesus loved. Oh man, I said, the first thing I'm gonna do is him. His money asked me what I want to be. I want to be a disciple like John, the one that Jesus loved. You understand? I wanted to be a disciple. What do I know about as a disciple, you know, at, 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 at that age? You know what I'm saying? But I was there. I wanted him. I wanted to be like him because I wanted to be loved. I wanted to be loved. I wanted to be loved. And I wanted to be loved by Jesus. And I knew that I was loved by Jesus because my name was John. <laughs> so when I saw that in the Bible, I recognized, you know, that was the first thing I recognized was my own name. And then to be associated with Jesus, you know what I'm saying? That made a big difference. But I didn't understand the connection of it when I was younger. I'm, I'm 63 now. I really understand why I had that connection at an early age, why I was attracted to illustrations. Why well, I was attracted to understanding what I'm seeing beyond what I was seeing with my natural eyes or my natural understanding. Come on, glory to God. I believe in this day and time, Jesus is more than enough for all of us. All of us, no matter what we're going through. If we keep him in the center and allow him to lead and allow him to carry us and provide for us, we will be in safety. You understand? Our world, our lives will be more abundant. More abundant because we know him. Because we placed him in the center of our lives. Every brother, every man, every child needs to know who Jesus is. I'm so glad that when I was younger, when I was just a child, I understood who Jesus was. Going to Sunday school, Bible study. It helped me along the way. It started when I was little. I had a choice to continue. And was there a season in my life where I did not? Yes, there was many seasons in my life that I did not. But one thing that stayed with me was Jesus. One thing that I knew that I could always call on him. One thing that I knew that I could pray. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for that. Because through all my trials, my ups and my downs, <clears throat> Whenever I was in trouble or before the trouble came, I was always praying. I was always just saying, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Didn't even know why I was saying, thank you, Jesus. But any mishap that happened along my way and that he got me out of it, I was like, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Would you be with me, Jesus? Would you lead me, Jesus? Would you protect me, Jesus? Would you love me, Jesus? All through my young life, it was always there. Now, how was I going to serve him? I didn't know. Life happened. Life happened. Life happens. And sometimes it led me in the darkest, darkest, dry places in my life. The desert. The desert. You understand what I'm saying? Taking me from life and I entered into the desert. When you leave home, you enter into a desert, an unknown territory, and you go through it. When you're living, when you want to live, you go through, you experiment things, you know, or things that come your way. You go investigate. Some felt good, some weren't. Some were misled. You understand when a person like myself is molested, not knowing that my world was about to change. The way I felt about myself, the way I saw other people, it changed, it got altered. Even though I knew it was Jesus, but I didn't know I was in danger. I didn't know I was being molested. I didn't know I was being taken advantage of. How would I know? How would I know if nobody told me? How would I know if nobody showed me? How would I know if I didn't believe in Jesus from the beginning. 
You know, and I look at that now and I say, how many people didn't know Jesus when they were growing up? They might have not had a father. They might not have had a father, I mean, a mother. But did they have Jesus? Did they have Jesus early in their lives? Young people now, do you know who Jesus is? Do you know what he can do for you? Oh, glory to the Lord. When I was younger, I knew who he was. I feel for the young people now because they don't know to bend their knees and ask God and pray to God. Maybe, maybe some of them will be still alive today if that were possible. And if that had happened, bless the people, Lord. It's going to take us to step up and let people know, please put Jesus in the center of your life. Allow him to lead you. He knows the direction that you need to go. You can trust Jesus to lead you. Not like you can trust a policeman. You know, it'd be a one time when I was growing up, we could trust a policeman. You felt like he would protect you. Nowadays, I don't think anybody would just follow a policeman. Go this way. You know, we have doubt now. Now we're not sure what's their motive, what are they planning to do? You know, where's their heart? Do they have Jesus in the center of their lives? Because if you have a policeman on the street and he doesn't know Jesus, that means he's subject to anything. He's subject to be conned. He's subject to be misdirected. He is subject to be, be, um, be used by the enemy to steal, rob, and kill. You know what I'm saying? The whole system, if it's not lined up with Jesus, if Jesus is at the center of the police department, the United States, or anybody in authority, if they don't have a relationship with God, they're subject to the enemy. Plain and simple, and it's true. You can look at our world today, even the politicians. Do they have Jesus in the center of their life? You know, these governors, do they have Jesus as the center of their life? Or is it man that they place in the center of their lives so they can get something that's very, very temporal? Here today, gone tomorrow. You can have a mansion and that mansion can burn up, gone. Everything you own, gone. Because you're trusted in that. Trust me, trust me, understand. God, Jesus is not marked. He said every knee, every tongue, it's going to confess Jesus. You understand? When you're going and you see your house burned down, you're going to say, glory, Lord, Jesus, what am I going to do now? You better call him and make him the center of your life. Jesus will use a tragedy in your life if you ignored him, didn't think anything of him. Trust me, if it's not now, it will come to a point where you will recognize who he is and you will call on his name. You will bend your knees and you will pray. Why not get your relationship with Jesus Christ now? This time in this year, 2023, things are going to get ugly. They're going to get ugly. For those who don't see him, they're going to be hopeless. They will be led astray because they're going to trust in a system that doesn't include Christ. You understand what I'm saying? They're looking through the system to provide their, their meat and their bread. But the bread they offer is not the bread of life. Huh, it's just bread. You know, they'll do harm to your body. Come on now, the meat that they serve. You know what I'm saying? That meat might not be good for you. What you what you intake, digesting, you know? And misinformation is like dead meat, dead food that you're taking in. Come on, glory. Come on, glory. We got to recognize Jesus is the center of your life, should be the center of your life. Now, to know Jesus, you will understand that he's not condemning you. He's not telling you what you can and cannot do. Your relationship with him will do that. You understand? He knows who we are. He knows the trials that we will go through. But if you don't know him, you don't know that it's there for you. My people perish for the lack of knowledge. If you refuse to have the knowledge of Jesus Christ in your life, operating in your life, or if you never prayed to him, you never bend your knees, and you never glorified him or thanked him for your goodness, then you're subject to anything. You will be subject to misinformation. 
You will believe a lie and you know the truth and you see the truth, but you'll believe the lie instead. Come on now, you'll start believing in man's unrighteousness and thinking you're going to get to the promised land. It will be a promised land from where? Hell. Come on, Glow. What do you want to live? In the promised land offered to you by hell or the promised land that's offered to you by Jesus? Knowing him, loving him, seeing who he is for real. Not man's telling you their opinion of him. You have to have your own personal relationship with Jesus Christ, your own experience. If you don't have an experience with Jesus Christ, how are you going to know for yourself? You can't count on what somebody else says because what if they don't really have Jesus in the sense of their lives? Jesus said, you'll know my people by the fruit that they bear. What kind of fruit do they bear? Oh, matter of fact, if you don't know that there are fruits that's being bared each and every day, everybody that you go around, there are fruits that they are bearing. But are you recognizing if it's good fruit, bad fruit? Come on now. Come on, glory. We all need to have Jesus at the center of our lives. If you think the government should be the center of your life and they should govern you and you decide somebody who doesn't have a relationship with Christ is going to make up the rules for your life. Oh, come on, glory. Come on, glory. You got to make a decision for your own selves. How are you going to live? You understand? Nobody's going to, hey, this day and time, 2023, you better get it ready now, because 2024 is not promised to none of us. Come on, glory. It's not promised to any of us. If we don't have Jesus right now, build that relationship. I encourage everybody, sound of my voice, be encouraged. Get a relationship with Christ and get it now. Start knowing who he is. The importance and power behind prayer. I'm not motivated by getting any money from anybody. No, I'm motivated because there's an urgency. Jesus is going to return whether you believe it or not. You understand that? No matter what you think and what you believe, if it doesn't line up with Jesus, it don't matter what you think. You think you're here just to serve you and to build your pockets and build your wealth and, and live in your fancy house and your all these cars. That ain't nothing. You know, it's dumb. Another word is shit. You understand? Know That's just temporary. Temporary. You want an abundant life, you got to serve others with Jesus being the center of your life. Make no mistake. If Jesus is nowhere in your life, then deal with your issues. Deal with your decisions. What you're dealing with is based on your decisions. What you believe and what you don't believe. Come on, glory. Come on, glory. Uh, we're going to a church or listening to a pastor. I found it for my own life. I can count on listening to the pastor. He has his personal relationship with Christ. He knows what he knows. I need to know what I know about Jesus. And seeing what he knows line up with what I know about Jesus and what I found out in my own spirit. Jesus is no respect to anybody, a person. No, he's not going to disrespect me or feel less of me because I'm not a preacher standing behind a pulpit. You know what I'm saying? No, 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 no. We all got our own place and doing whatever we're supposed to be doing for the assistance of Jesus to ignite hope in their lives, to make a difference. So I encourage every brother, Jesus is enough for you. You understand? You might be going after the dollars, and the appearance and the fancy car and, the, and, 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 and being sexually active, that's only temporary. Trust me, it's only temporary. And if you didn't get it the right way, it'll be gone. And you will not live an abundance life. You'll be always doing something more underhanded than what you did before to maintain it. It's a false reality. If Jesus Christ is not in the center of your life, Personally, in your heart, for real, not in your head. And that's some imitation. Thinking because I'm calling his name, I have a relationship that makes me pure. Hell no. No. I'm like a filthy rag. I could try as hard as I can, but my little temptation can sometimes take me down a road that I don't need to be down.
But I'm trusting God, he'll lead me back. My heart says, I love you, Jesus. I want you, Jesus. I want to be used by you to inspire others. Get a relationship with Christ. Allow him to be the center of your life. If you don't know why he should be in the center of your life, because you, you don't know him. You don't know why. And you're thinking about the Bible. Don't make it something that you can't read. You can read. You can pray. Don't be stuck in a Bible of religion. Religion is just that, religion. You have to have a personal relationship where you see the evidence and you would know you have the evidence when you understand him and you can see the difference in your own life. Who am I? I am nobody. But I went through the hell I went through because I didn't put him close. I knew about him. He was my lifeline. Jesus Christ, knowing about him, but then when, the, when, it, when it moved from being a head knowledge to a heart knowledge, everything changed. Everything changed. I don't have to have the big house. I don't have to have a nice car. That's not going to give me peace. My peace won't be there. <laughs> I can't drive it. You know, I can't buy it. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Peace is so... It's, it's different. You know when you have it. You know when you have the peace. You know when you have the peace. So I encourage you. I encourage you. If nothing else, do one thing. You owe it to yourself. Know who Jesus is. You got, you, there's no excuse why you don't know him. It will only be for your unbelief. Or you don't care to know him. Or you don't think it's important because you see everything else in the world doesn't need them. But you look at the condition of the world when they took him out. When Jesus came out of the schools, the schools went to pot. I know. I remember when it went. When it went, we should wake up, go to the school, say our prayers, say the Pledge of Allegiance. All that's gone. But look at the condition of the world. The world is not safe like it used to be. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. No, so much killing. Now it's like it's justifiable because somebody has money and they and they lobbying. You know, don't put no bills on us. We we want to keep having our guns so people can kill people, so we can kill each other. <laughs> How twisted it is! Jesus must be the center of your life. Will you be safe? From our danger and harm? No. You'll know how to handle it and you'll know who to call on when it does come. You understand? But don't wait. Why wait to know Jesus when it's too late? What if it gets you to the point where they say, oh, oh the, the Bible has to be removed? <laughs> you can remove the Bible, but you can't remove God. You understand? You can't put him aside and say, oh, that's not valid. Mm -mm. You're fooling yourself and the blood will be on your hands. When Jesus rewards the wicked, it could be nothing like we can imagine. Nothing like you can imagine. What's the worst thing could happen to you? You don't know yet. Jesus knows and he knows just how to correct you and repay you for the wrong that you've done. You better look in the Bible to find out what's the penalty for what you're doing and what you're doing to others. You will not get away. You will not get away from Jesus' wrath. You might get away from my wrath, but not Jesus. Come on now. On the good side, when that's a that's a you know, I don't want you to go down. I want you, I want to lift you up. I want to lift you up. I know. A relationship with Jesus Christ could change a man's life, a woman's life, a child's life. Get to know him. Don't reject him. Don't think that you are more powerful than he is. You understand? Don't ever think you're above him. Don't ever put him to the side as though you don't need him. And then you call on him when there's a problem. Wouldn't it be better to know him now when there is no problem? And you can rejoice in him freely because he's showing you who he is through the little things in your life. You got to recognize you're not going to live in this life to I mean, 2023 to 2024 
without knowing him, because you're going to have to call on his name. You know what's going on. You can see it. Liars, deceivers are on the headlines. And they are flaunting it like, for, for you know, for all get out. You know what I'm saying? Don't be deceived. <laughs> Jesus is not marked. <laughs> and no need to get mad about it. Mm -mm. Pray about it. Stand up. Call on his name. An enemy does not like the name of Jesus. Whenever you confront it with the enemy in your face and try to deceive you, do you wrong, and if you have a relationship with, God, with Jesus, just call on his name. Stop praising him. Say, glory, Lord, I know you will protect me no matter what I'm facing. Glory, glory, hallelujah. I'm calling on you right now. Lord, thank you for loving me. Thank you, Lord, for blessing me. Oh, glory, glory, glory. Jesus, Jesus, I'm calling your name. Start singing. Start singing and give Jesus the praise right in the midst of it. If they locked you up and got your hands, hand help, call on his name. Hallelujah, Lord. Glory to you, Lord. Bless you, bless you, Lord. Oh, Jesus. Call on his name. When we are weak and strong, he will stand up for his children. Jesus will stand up for his children. He, for his children. He will correct the wrong. Understand, vengeance is the Lord's, not yours. Just call him. Make him center of your life. Allow him to lead you. Allow him to carry you. Always focus. He will always be before the mountains, before the rivers, in the valleys, in the in the in the um, desert, dark places. <laughs> Put Jesus in the center; you'll be able to go through all of that. You understand? You'll learn something along the way. It will strengthen you along the journey. But don't deny him. Don't deny him. He is a sinner. He should be the center of everyone's life. And if you don't know him, that's on you. There's no excuse. And when a day comes when he returns, don't sit up there and say, oh, Lord, you know, I, mm -mm. no, no, no. That's the worst thing is it when it end and you're held accountable for your life. And he tells you, depart from me. I don't know you. I don't know you. And he tells you there's no excuse for you not to know me. You chose not to. I'm sorry. No, Jesus won't even say I'm sorry. Mm -mm. Sorry is out. I don't know you. Depart from me. I don't know you. Why are you in my face now? I don't know you. And you don't know me. Hmm. Glory to God. Be encouraged, my brothers. Jesus loves you. And he's got something for you to do. And the enemy knows it. The enemy knows the power that you have, but you don't know it. You don't know what you got inside of you and how he wants to use you. Come on, Adam. Where are thou? What are you doing? What are you doing with your life? Answer the call. Don't run away. Put Jesus in the center of your life. Oh, man. He will change your life for the good. <laughs> Come on, glory. You have a good one.